Good morning, girls. Hello. Hello. Good morning. Hi. Hi. Hello. 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 <laughs> darling hello hello oh goodness yes i know <laughs> you're just as bad as maggie every time i start the vlog ah <laughs> are you girls honestly i know i love you both so much too well, that was quite a chaotic start to the vlog welcome back hello everyone <laughs> so as you can tell by the title we've got two labradors again i'm looking after ivy who is our family dog from my family up in the north. My parents have gone away on holiday, so I went to collect Ivy at the weekend. So yeah, she's with us for the next, well, she's been with us two days, three days, so the next seven. Mmm, just made myself a coffee. I'm back with another chill vlog. I really enjoyed last week's vlog and I read through all of your comments and you all seem to love the yoga. <laughs> I, I obviously just set the camera up and I kind of forgot about it and I was editing the footage back and I had like tears streaming down my eyes. Honestly, I sent it to Zara, I said, can I put this on the internet? She's like, yeah. <laughs> You're all like friends anyway. Um, so yeah, that was fun. But I'm really just enjoying the chilled, relaxed vlogs. The weather's been so warm in London the past week, 10 days. So on the vlog, I was out in the park. It was lovely. It progressively got hotter and hotter. And I've said it before and I've said it again. I've watched videos online of Americans and Australians living in London. And they say the heat here is different. If you ever visit London in peak summer, you will know the denseness of the air combined with the underground, the overground, the cars, it's just like smog central. So we actually went to Brighton at the weekend just to try and escape the heat. Um, I didn't vlog, but it was just so, so lovely. We just I had Zara's sister in town. It was like a belated birthday gift for her. So we went to Brighton for the day. I got my ear pierced, which is really cool. I already have one done, but I got the other one done as well. I got this little bracelet from a street vendor for like 10 pounds, like silver chain, vintage. And I got another one around my neck as well here. This, both of them are 20 pounds. It's 20 pounds in total. It was just a really nice day. We also went to see Mamma Mia in London, which has been on my list for years. Guys, if you are visiting London, or if you plan on visiting in the future, see Mamma Mia. Oh my goodness, wow. I love ABBA, like I am obsessed with ABBA, honestly. I didn't do the ABBA voyage, I haven't seen the Mamma Mia experience in um, Greenwich where you kind of like get submerged into like a Greek themed evening, but Mamma Mia, the Western musical in Covent Garden, like the Strand area, wow. Absolutely incredible, blew my mind. The vocals were next level, the staging, it made me cry. I just loved it, I absolutely loved it. So if you get the chance, do see it. So I thought in today's vlog, there's a nice little chill one. We could actually go and have a look at some of the charity shops where I live. So I know I always head into central London, but I kind of live a little bit towards like the greener parts of London. So zone two slash three, I'm on the cusp. So London works in zones. Zone one is like central London, which is where like Mayfair and Oxford Circus and all like the really expensive parts are. And then zone two is kind of a little bit further out and it just works in zones. I thought it could be nice because I've never really done that before. So I hope you're in the mood for that. I also need to get a haircut. So I read through some of the comments and a lot of you were asking how I get my hair cut. So I won't be able to film in the barbers because it's a very busy barber shop and I feel like they won't really know what I'm doing there. <laughs> I need to go and get that done. I also had a world of books delivery arrive. Oh my goodness. I've never had such a positive response from creating a Goodreads. So many of you followed me over on there. So if you have, lovely to have you over there. You'll see my reviews and how I'm getting on with books. I'm about 120 pages into Shuggy Bane, loving it. It's, I can tell it's gonna be an emotional one. A lot of you asked as well, why don't I join my local library? Um, I actually am a member of my local library. It's where we actually go to vote. So I, when I was voting for the last election, um, I registered and I have an account there, I can get books. 
But um, usually the books that I'm kind of like interested in, there isn't a great selection there. And I love gifting books to people. Like me and my mum have got a bit of a book club going on. So Zara, when she finishes a book, I then read it. Most of our books, if not, I'd say a good 80% of our books actually from charity shops or world of books, which are secondhand books. So we very rarely buy new and we don't really get on with Kindles. I did have one in COVID when bookshops were closed and I read on it and it was fine, but I just prefer physical books. As you can tell, I bought some more. So let's start with the first one. This is a cookbook. This is Eat by Nigel Slater. This was £3.80 and the RRP when it was released 10 years ago was £26. So even by now, it's a bargain. This has over 600 dinner ideas. I thought it was absolutely amazing. A lot of meat related, but easily adaptable. I just love the way Nigel Slater presents his cookbook. Sorry if you can hear the road, it's still kind of clammy. <laughs> so I've got the windows open. The way he writes, his style of cooking is so similar to my style of cooking. It's not fancy, it's very simple. Few ingredients, but the ingredients that he uses are really good. There's little pages and anecdotes in here, and I just think, honestly, one of the best food authors of our generation. Next up, Taylor Jenkins Reid, Daisy Jones and the Six. So many of you recommended this. When I popped on my Instagram asking for book recommendations, um, if you aren't following me on Instagram, I know there are a few new faces here. I'll leave my account links down below and also on screen. Whenever I'm not vlogging on a weekend, which is very rare, I'll usually do little weekend roundups on Instagram. And I pop stories on there as well about books and stuff. So you can have, you can have a little look. On July 12th, which is my birthday, 19, I thought this said 97, which is literally the year I was born. It's 1979. How mad's that? Um, everyone knows about Daisy Jones and the Six. Their sound defined an era. Their albums were on every turn tip. Well, they sold out arenas from coast to coast. And on July 12th, 1979, Daisy Jones walked barefoot on stage at the Whiskey and it all came crashing down. So I'm very intrigued about this one. A lot of you have read it and recommended it. Next up, we've got Swimming in the Dark by Tomasz Jedrowski. Sorry if that name is incorrect. Um, quite a small book, this one. Only 227 pages, but it's a translation. It's meant to be such a beautiful book. I'm really trying to like expand the books that I am reading, not just about like crime thrillers. So this book explores topics of political conformity, LGBTQ love, um, so yeah, I just feel like it's gonna be a real good one to read. And then these were also recommendations from fellow followers. So we've got Beneath a Scarlet Sky and All the Light That We Cannot See, both set in 1940s um, wartime, Second World War. So this is World War II in Italy. Um, Love was worth spying for, meant to be such a beautiful book. And then this is All the Light That We Cannot See by Anthony Doerr. And um, this is set in Paris about Nazi invasion, Hitler youth, um, and it based on a character who is um, blind, he's been blind by the age of six, and um, it's just a pure, epic, devastating, lovely novel, so I'm really excited to read both these. This whole stack of books cost me 19 pounds. Incredible, I had a 20% off cord to use, and they were four for three. Brilliant, absolutely brilliant. Love that site, it's my little thing. I don't really do online orders anymore, so. I buy books instead. When I say Maggie is needy, Ivy is a whole new level. Look at this, she just has to lie next to you. Hello, I'm literally just sat here. You are a joy, you know that. So Ivy's actually four in um, October, and she was the dog. Sorry, I'm just here. <laughs> oh, hi, hello, hello. Mwah. So Ivy was the dog that um, my family got when my childhood dog sadly passed away. Uh, I grew up with a Springer Spaniel called Jess. And I think I actually put this on my YouTube channel. This is back in 2019. Um, we sadly lost Jess and she, she was like my best friend growing up. I didn't really have a lot of friends growing up as a kid. And she was just like my one true like bestie. So losing her was... Oh, it was so hard. Like she was there when I obviously left and went traveling around the world. When I left and moved to London, she came to London one Christmas. It was just she was such a beautiful dog, beautiful memories. So when Ivy came around, she kind of like filled that void. She never replaced Jess, but she just filled it. And I just love that now her and Maggie are best friends. Like who'd have thought it all those years ago, Ivy, that you guys would be in a flat in London just chilling together? Huh? <laughs> who'd have thought that? 
Crazy, crazy how things work out, eh? Okay, so Zara's just heading home from work, so she'll be with the girls in one moment. I've got some parcels to send these recently sold on Vinted, so I'm gonna send these off. If you did make a purchase, I think I linked it in my last vlog, so you did head on over there, thank you. <laughs> I'm glad they're gonna be going to a new home, so I'm gonna drop these off, drop some things off at the charity shop, and then have a look. I love this mirror, but it makes me look very distorted. Right, let's go. another charity shop just further down it's a royal trinity hospice there are about 12 charity shops on this high road it's europe's biggest high road apparently interesting fact for you there and the very first ever waitrose was on this high road like in 1950 something i think so it's got a lot of history so this is the royal trinity hospice and this is definitely more of a posher charity shop but they've normally got some gorgeous bits in so let's have a look is give a little. These have normally got some amazing homeware bits. I'm gonna have a look in the window and see what they have. It's normally a real mismatch in here. There's some weird and wonderful things. So let's go and have a look and see what we can find. Already some things that are catching my eye. Okay, so I've taken a mid-pause break because I was so hungry. I didn't realize the time, it's 10 past two. So I am gonna make some lunch and then I'm gonna head back out and get my hair cut and visit some more charity shops. I'm just making a quick tuna sandwich. I just thought I had to share this because this is so funny. Maggie grew up with two vegetarians <laughs> and Ivy did not. Ivy doesn't like any fruit and veg. Well, most fruit and veg, look at this. So I'm mixing up some tuna. I've got two pieces of cucumber here. Ivy, can you sit down please? Right, Maggie loves cucumber. There we go. Ivy. <laughs> Ivy, it's cucumber. Nope, not for me. <laughs> it's good for you. It's good for you. Nope, I guess that goes to Maggie then. <laughs> Bless you. Okay, we're gonna have a look in cancer research now. This is quite a big one, so they've normally got some really great bits in. So I'm back from the charge shops, I've had my hair cut. I said I was gonna film, well, I said I was gonna try and film in the barber shop, but it was very busy. I know a couple of guys have left comments asking what I asked for in the barber shop. It's a buzz cut, so I get a grade three on the top, and then the sides is a zero. So it's called a skin fade, so it's a high skin fade, so like if it's a low skin fade, it'd be like eyebrow level. 
just a high skin fade with a buzz cut on top. I went to a new coffee shop and it was lovely. Really nice, really lovely service. I now have a loyalty card, so I'm gonna be a loyal customer to them. I'm gonna show you everything I've got because I've got some really lovely bits. I've just totted up everything I've spent. 45 pounds in total. I've got three shirts, serving plates, a cookbook, a polo shirt, and a candle reed diffuser set. All of the charity shops I've visited will be linked down below as well. So, let's start with home pieces first. So, this was £2.50 in St. Christopher's. I just think it's really cool. It's got like a bobbin style around the outside. It was originally £5, but for £2.50, I was like, that is coming home with me. I'm envisaging in the summer months a salad plate in the winter months piled high with roasted vegetables. And by vegetables, I mean potatoes. So yeah, that was £2.50. I'm really happy with that. I've wanted a salad plate for ages, and I thought that was a very, very good price. Next up, you would have thought, actually, they had a candle set unopened. Aldi Jeeps of the Yankee Candles Christmas scents. That's good. Christmas cookie. Don't last that long. No, I know. I know. It's my first piece of Christmas. I'm going to say paraphernalia, but it's not paraphernalia. But you know what I mean. Christmas bits this year. This was from St. Christopher's as well. It's a Christmas spice scented diffuser and votive set. I have absolutely no idea what votive means, but it sounds fancy. This was five pounds. Habitat in England is pretty fancy. So it comes with a little candle, it says Christmas spice on it, and a little reed diffuser bottle as well with the same scent so we can do a candle and a reed diffuser in the same room. I think that'll be like really punchy. Does it come with reed? That's my question. It does. There we are. For a five, I actually think that was bad from Habitat as well. That would probably be a little bit more expensive. So I'm pretty pleased with that. So this cookbook, I'm so excited about. It was from Shelter. It was, sorry, I thought it was, I thought it was two, she, it was, it was two pounds. I'm sure it she'd run through the cell as two pounds. Yes, two pounds. So it was three, knocked down to two. This is the complete Chinese takeaway cookbook from Kwoklin Wan. I've definitely pronounced that wrong. But I'm going to go with Kwoklin Wan. The complete Chinese takeaway cookbook. Over 150 of the most popular recipes. Everything from crispy duck salad, barbecue ribs, veggie wonton soup, pancake rolls, speedy special fried rice, spring rolls, hot and sour soup, plus 50 brand new tasty recipes that you won't find anywhere else. Zara and I love a Chinese takeaway. There's loads of Chinese vegetable dishes as well, not just beef and duck and stuff. And I find a lot of Chinese and Asian food is it quite easily adaptable too. So Szechuan style aubergine and tofu. That looks so good. Very pleased with this book. This you actually saw me try and install, but this is a big oversized painter shirt from H&M. So this was from the Royal Trinity Hospice London, and this is in a size XL for £10. So again, I need to, I need to discuss this. Charity shops are definitely getting more expensive, which is a shame because Obviously, they're for people who, like, their budgets allow. Obviously, if you can't purchase first-hand, brand new from a store, then obviously charity shops are a great option, but it's a shame that people who resell online go in these shops and buy the pieces and then sell them for a lot more, which has obviously hiked the prices up in charity shops, which means sometimes second-hand clothes aren't accessible anymore. And this this shouldn't have been £10, it's be honest, from H&M, because you could probably buy this new for about 20 but it's very nice. And it is going to a good cause, so I kind of sit on the fence with it, but... It's a really big oversized shirt, huge sleeve length with like a nice little button on the sleeve. I love this. Again, nice and oversized. It's just easy to wear, easy to throw on. In the same store, this I'm so pleased with. You've seen me try this on as well. So this is a Cristiano Baldinucci Italian polo shirt with a nice little cuff on the sleeve. So this is slightly more fit. It's like a muscle fit but it just, oh, it fits so well. I think that's absolutely stunning. It's also got like a cuffed bottom as well. So very, very smart. I tried it on in store and I love it. This was nine pounds. It's made with cashmere and wool blend. So really, really lovely material. I then went into St. Christopher's t-shirt I got on Vinted. Well, I now got a long sleeve version as well. This is more like the one I saw in Paris. The color means a bit of a, bit of a wash, but I can put that in a hot shirt wash. And this was £12, again, so not exactly cheap, cheap, but this was originally from Zara Man. Really nice quality, big oversized fit. This isn't a size medium, but it is oversized. I tried it on in store. Really good sleeve length as well. Nice to just wear open with a vest underneath. And then last but not least, I am so chuffed with this. This is from Uniqlo, and I got this in um, Sense. This was £5.50. It's an olive green oversized 
Painter shirt, which I think is so nice. It's got like olive green buttons as well. It is a mix of linen and cotton. So 66% cotton, 34% linen. So really premium materials for £5.50. I'm going to say head to the less known charity shops. So British Heart Foundation, Cancer Research, amazing charities, but they're very popular. And I looked them both on our high street and had nothing in that I liked. The slightly less popular ones had some amazing stuff, so do check them out. But yeah, really, really happy with this. I tried it on in store and it fits really nice and oversized. It's going to be great as like a transitional piece heading from summer to the slightly cooler months where you don't need a coat, but a nice little shirt jacket is a great option. And that's everything. So I'm really chuffed to bits with that. I've had a really nice day. It's nice to not have to head into Central and just appreciate you're on High Street. So chuffed to bits. <laughs> Okay, so I've just wrapped up work for the day. I've just been doing some little laptop time over there. Look, the lamp's on. It's just chucked it down. I felt like it really needed to clear the air, and I'm glad that I did because it is no longer clammy. <laughs> uh, but we're about to go and do a food shop, like a little top-up shop. We've got a Hello Fresh box arriving tomorrow. Thank goodness, because tomorrow's a really busy day, so very glad about that. But we're just gonna go get some top-ups, just some bread, milk, that kind of thing, and, and come back and cozy up for the evening. We're back from the food shop. I got wet. That's Ivy having a drink, not Zara. Okay, let me show you what I'm having for dinner. So this is dinner. How delicious, oh, is it focused? How delicious does that look? So this is Jamie Oliver's one pan, and this is mushroom and tofu noodles. Really simple, oyster mushrooms, spring onions, ginger, chili oil, noodles, hoisin sauce, and prawn crackers to serve. That's it. Give the video a thumbs up if you want another cooking with Zara video. Zara is currently grating the ginger using a microplane. Everyone, it's like my nails. I'm in a pearl era at the moment. What it's not you... focusing. Can you focus on my nails, please? Don't. I think they're nice. They're not focusing. These are my pearl nails. Very nice. Thank you. Back to grating, please. So we're using oyster mushrooms for this recipe because they replicate, well, supposedly replicate chicken when you roast them. They've got like a nice texture. I love a mushroom. Um, so yeah, I'm just going to chop these up and pop them on this roasting tray here. Okay, so on the roasting tray we've got chestnut mushrooms, oyster mushrooms, spring onions, grated ginger, and I put a little bit of chili oil, olive oil, and five spice. Chestnuts roasting on an open fire, Jack Frost nipping at your nose. Okay, that needs to roast for about 20 minutes. They stop. Let me just show how strong it is. What in God's name is no, going on down show. here? Okay, now I need to get a grip of the toy. You just need to get a grip full stop. Don't tear the Prosecco bottle, Ivy. That was from Ewan. How cute these photos. We actually got them um, developed in Brighton in this little photomatic shop. It's so, so cool in there. These are the black and white ones. And these were from a little drink that we had in a bar in um, Common Garden. Tequila Mockingbird. Tequila Mockingbird. There we are. It's Sophie. As you can tell, I don't really know what was going on here. Zara kept on telling me to sit down and we were both like, there is no chair to sit on. So she was sat on our legs and I was doing like a plank on the wall. But um, yeah, they look really nice. We've got a nice little collection of photographs. These are from Paris. And these I found in our bookcase. These are from 2019, the spring of 2019. We were both right now dissertation here holding hot cross buns. This doesn't often happen, but when it does, it does give me cause for concern because that's what they're supposed to look like after 25 minutes of roasting in the oven. And that's what we're currently dealing with. 200 degrees, 200 degrees. What temperature is the oven on? 200 degrees. Oh dear. Well, I'd like to just update everyone that I didn't get involved. Gosh. It's actually resident chef. It's quite alarming, isn't it? I'm sure with the noodles and everything stirred together, it'll be all right. I think they're quite crispy. Oh, yeah, they're, 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 they're. One pan or one tray. I, I mean, I'm sure it'll taste good. You're supposed to crunch over some prawn crackers on top and then some spring onions. So there we are. Dinner is served. All right, going in for a prawn crack on top. Okay, let's go for a taste. I probably would roast them for a bit less time. 25 minutes, so that was less than 25 minutes and they're pretty crispy. Hmm. It's nice. It's nothing extraordinary, but it's nice. Maybe with the tofu it would have been better. I don't know. I'm gonna name that like a seven out of 10. Hmm. Okay, I think I'm gonna wrap this vlog up. We've just finished dinner and we've got some Charlie Bingham's 
sticky toffee pudding. I love, I just said to Zara, it's cooled down and we're instantly right autumn mode. <laughs> Hot puddings are back. Just tried it, really, really good. Charlie Bingham's makes some of the best, like, premiered food. It's so delicious. Are you a sticky toffee pudding and ice cream or a sticky toffee pudding and custard? Zara's ice cream. I'm both. <laughs> I like ice cream and custard. And yes, that is all for me. <laughs> I just made a whole pot of it. <laughs> Anyway, my camera battery is flashing. I really hope you've enjoyed this vlog. Thank you so much for watching. Loves you all. Take care and I'll catch up very soon in a future video. Bye for now.